Okay, so in this recording, I'm going to take a little look through ways that you might capture your risk, your cost risk in particular, across your projects. So here in my EPS view within P6, I'm focusing on the energy projects. I've got this filter to only show those projects that have got a risk register. Um, I can see I've got the base cost, the at completion total cost for the projects. And I've also got this project risk exposure piece. So this is coming from, here are my risk registers for all of the different projects within that same um, EPS, the energy section. I can see they're all in a similar uh, layout. So the same template has been used for each, but their scorings are different. And in particular, therefore, their exposures are different. So just to maybe clarify, pick one of the larger numbers in here. So we can see within um, the Johnstown project, we've got risk number two, which has got a, a very high probability and a very high cost. Uh, we basically multiply these two values together. So we get a weighted cost value to get the 30 or 250, maybe slightly easier to see on a number that's not got higher on it. If we take the middle of the probability here, 40%, I multiply by the middle of this point, so the middle of 15 and 30 is 22 and a half. 40% of 22 and a half is what gives us the 9,000. Sum up all of the risk exposures within a project is where we then arrive at these values here. And then all I've added in here so far is a percentage. What does my project risk exposure look like as a percentage of my total project cost? And I've got um, colouring on here as well, just to flag. Um, whether that is uh, getting particularly high or not. So I can certainly see for three of the projects, it is looking very high. Okay, so that is fine. That is looking at bringing your qualitative risk scoring, risk exposure in there. Um, what if you also want to move on and start to do quantitative risk analysis? So we've basically got the same three fields on the left. So through to here is the same as before. I can also start to look at getting things like my um, quantitative risk analysis in, in PRA and maybe populating that back in here as well. So I've done this for one project so far. I can see for Buckingham, I've got my P80 risk cost. And then I've got my P80 contingency. So the P80 contingency is just the P80 cost minus the ad completion. And then we've got the similar percentage. This time we're looking at the percentage of the P80 contingency over the total cost. It's roughly the same, so it's roughly 100%, slightly over 101. Um, so in this case, we can see that our quantitative value is actually 1.27 times bigger than the qualitative value. So the 55 divided by the 43 just gives an indication of when we run the quantitative analysis, how much bigger is our risk component after doing that. Um, and then I've got a little flag in here, a code that says, okay, do we want to, now that we've got quantitative risk analysis, use that value or not? Um, this is a drop down, so I can choose in the code here, um, yes or no. At the moment, you can see it's set to yes, and we're using, pop that to the side a second. At the moment, it's yes, and we're using the 55,000. So this combined risk exposure basically takes the one that we choose. So if I save it to say no, and we now use the 43725 in our values instead. Um, so just to show also the maybe one of these projects, I'm going to take the Johnstown project. I'm going to pop over into uh, to PRA. Let me uh, come out of this one that I was doing earlier. So I'm going to connect up. Log into P6. Just go to that same energy section and take the Johnstown project. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm also importing my rules, resources, assignments. I'm not worrying about any of the other things on here. Um, I've just got my own little workspace, my own views that I uh, like. Um, also going to set this to. So on the Primavera Gantt page, 
um, is where I have my kind of overall view of the uh, of the project, if you like. So I could probably switch that uh, weeks. Get rid of this bottom half. So here's my overall view of the um, of the project. I'm going to pretty quickly go to show that that risk exposure data has also been pulled through into here. Um, I'm going to go straight and build my risk impacted plan. I'm just going to be looking at pre-mitigated for this purpose. Okay, let me quickly map those. Okay, so just fix the links between the risks and the activities. Rerun that building of the impacted risk plan. And this time we have that um, all work as we would like. Quickly run the analysis. I'm just gonna make sure that we're also capturing the percentiles because we want to grab those afterwards. So let's run the simulation and also capturing um, those percentile values. If we focus particularly on cost. So here we can see our base cost. Actually, let me quickly add on I think it's useful to see the difference between P80 and deterministic. So it's useful to see this. This is just a way of displaying on here the P80 contingency that we're going to be adding in here. So it's 80,690. So we can see the deterministic value is roughly also 80,000. The P80 is 160, so the, the P80 contingency is is also just a little over 80. So um, contingency is roughly the same size, the project fraction, fraction higher again. So having run our simulation here, we can pop those values back into P6. Um, I've got a template here, I'm working on my VM. It just maps the planned cost P80 back to the risk P80 cost. I've also got some uh, start and finish dates here for schedule stuff, but it's this cost one really um, that I'm focusing on here. Click on update. This all works well. Then you should get this update complete. You'll get a little warning here if it doesn't. And then that should mean I can come in here and for Johnston complete this risk P80 cost, which at the moment is blank, if I refresh, then I should get some numbers in here. So here's my Johnston complete. Here's my 80,930 um, contingency. The 160 is actually the figure that we passed through. Yeah. Um, see if I can pop both of these things together if I push that to the side. But then pull up the distribution chart. Okay, so we we have the one sixty total cost, one sixty seven six four is what we've sent back into P80. And we're basically just doing the same calculation to get the um, the difference between that and the, and the P80. So we've got the 8690, we've got 8930 on here. Hmm, got a slightly different number. I'm not quite sure why we've got a slight difference in the two. But um, I'm not going to worry about that uh, too much for the moment. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we can see We've got our original based on the project risk exposure. We've now got, having run our quantitative analysis, we can see we've got a number that's a little bit higher. We've gone from roughly 60 to, to 80,000. We're about a third higher, as we can see on this ratio here. Then we've got the decision, okay, are we gonna go with that quantitative risk analysis? Maybe I want, might want to check just my numbers and why I've got that little difference, but given that it's pretty small, I might say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna happily use my quantitative risk analysis piece in here now. And for this project, I'm going to switch across and having gone to the effort of doing my quantitative risk analysis and happy with it, 
that's the number that I'm going to use and it means that my risk exposure overall for this particular project is now higher and obviously I could then go and repeat that for these other projects in here. So hopefully that's been useful and helps you give a feel for how you might capture some of your cost risk data in P6 both qualitatively and combining it with, um, with Primavera risk analysis. Okay, thanks.